take a look inside the box and see what we got. There is my nice Skywatcher telescope. Nicely packaged. The foam looks awesome, keeping it nice and safe. Comes with its own aluminum case. Give you a quick rundown of what's in my case with my Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED. You, of course, got the telescope here. Great telescope. I've been enjoying this a lot. Um, I've got a new dovetail bar on the bottom. It comes with this guy. And it's just a little teeny thing. And the problem is to balance this thing with a camera on the back, I needed more length on the dovetail bar. So I got a, a new dovetail bar I put on there. I've got a, an Orion field flattener up here. And this is a great field flattener. Um, it's, I'll kind of explain the nose piece here in a second. Put some tape on there to hold it. I bought this 2 inch to 1 inch eyepiece mount that goes into my 2 inch focuser. I got that on Amazon. Nice little piece there. This piece over here is the nose piece that came originally with my Orion. Now I put this tape on here because what that does is the screws can dig into that and it gives it a little better hold. I wasn't a huge fan of this because there's no taper on it. And I'm always afraid that that thing's going to slide out the back with my camera on it. So I went on to Amazon and I bought a new piece, which is this piece up here. In fact, I'll show you just on screws. So this was the original nose piece. I purchased this one on Amazon. I'm going to put it back on. Right, I just put it back on. Now, the reason I like this new nose piece that I picked up on Amazon for 15 bucks is you can see there's a little bevel there. And what that does is the screws here in the two, two inch focuser, they now have something to catch on and this isn't going to slide out the back end and fall out with my camera in it. I put a little bit of painter's tape on there as well because then the screws can dig into that tape a little bit and it just gives it a real secure fit in the back of the, the focuser. And I'm going to show you this thing all set up out back in just a little bit. Then you've got to get yourself a T-ring. The T-ring is going to go onto the, the flattener there. This is what attaches to your camera. Two sizes on these. You can get the M42 threads or the M48. This is the M48. It's a little bigger. The reason I like this is it's going to take away a little of the vignetting in your photographs. It's a little bit of bigger opening. So really, that's a, it's a good purchase there as well. And that's about it. That's everything that's in my, my little case here, my Skywatcher case. I do love this thing. It's, it's been a blast. I've used it now for several photos crisp clear images if you get your focus nailed you're not going to have any of the uh, chromatic aberration i have noticed that i had a little bit of chromatic aberration when my focus was just a little bit off so make sure you get your focus nailed and you'll be all set let's go ahead in the backyard i'm going to set this thing up and get ready for andromeda all right here is the evo star 72 ed ready to photograph tonight we're going to be photographing the andromeda galaxy show you what we got going on first of all i got these trees over here so the andromeda galaxy starts right about there at six o'clock doesn't give me a lot of time this time of year because it drops behind these trees and it drops behind those trees right around three hours in so i might get two hours of photography that's what i'm hoping for now let's take a look here i've got the canon eos r hooked up which is a full frame camera it takes beautiful shots and it works great for astrophotography because the stars really light up back here on the, uh, the LCD screen. You can really focus well because you can see the stars. Then I've got the Orion field flattener right there. This thing has done a great job. It really does a, a nice job of flattening out the field. Then we got the 72ED. I put on this longer dovetail bar because to balance this thing is pretty tough. It's a light telescope, meaning that the weight of the camera back here, it weighs so much that it really is hard to balance it. So I had to get the longer dovetail bars so I can slide it up farther up on the mount to get the, the balance a little bit better. So there's what we got going on. And then this, of course, is the EQM35 by Skywatcher, the mount. I've loved this thing. I've had a lot of fun with it. We're ready to start photographing tonight. Hopefully we get something great in the Andromeda Galaxy. Okay, I've now spent two nights capturing images with my Evo Star 72 ED. It is time to process this. I'm going to use a program called Sequitor. So let's go ahead and open that up. I use Sequitor because it's a really easy stacking software program. A lot of people use Deep Sky Stacker. I really like Sequitor. So here's what I'm going to do. First, you click on the star images. Double click that. You're going to go find your light frames. And here are my light frames. So I'm going to highlight all of these. And I'm going to bring these into the program here. Click open. 
you will see I have 398 files. These were each 40 second exposures. So we're looking at just under four hours, four and a half hours. I think it was four hours and 25 minutes. Then we're gonna come down here to the noise images and those are your dark frames. So here are my dark frames. I'm gonna grab all those, bring them in and let's see, I have 40 dark frames. Then you need to get your vignetting images. These are the same things as your flat frames. And here are my flat frames. I'm going to bring those in. If you don't know how to make a flat frame, you just take a t-shirt, put it over the end of your telescope, and then get a white screen. I used my iPad to do this. And what that does is it gives you a flat frame. In this program, they call those vignetting images. So you can see I have 398 light frames, 40 dark frames, and 23 flat frames. Now I've got to uh, select a place to put my output file. I'm going to put my final frame right here on my desktop. I'm going to call that Andromeda. And that is going to be saved as a TIFF file. So it's an uncompressed TIFF file. And I'm going to click Save. And I'm all set. There's only one other thing I need to do. That's right down here where it says Composition, Align Stars, Accumulation. Click it one time. And I'm going to take it off of this accumulation. I'm going to make it a Select Best Pixels. And then drag the slider all the way to the right to where it says Strict. And that's it. That's all I need to do for my compression software. Click Start. This is going to take probably an hour and a half to two hours because I have so many files. We'll come back and have my final image here. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. This is my stacked image, and sure enough, it took just under two hours to get this stacked image together. But this is what Andromeda looks like coming fresh out of your camera after you've stacked it. Not much there. I'm not going to walk you through the whole Photoshop process here. There are a lot of videos out there you can take a look at. I'll show you quickly what I do. Basically, it's all a matter of stretches and adjusting levels. So your stretches are, you're working with your curves. Open up your curves. I'll drag that up. Don't want to blow out my highlights. Click OK. Then I come into my adjustments and levels. And what I'm going to do here is just bring all of my colors all the way up to where the information starts. You can see here I've got red, green, and then the blue. And you can start to slowly see some of the detail coming out. I'll do one more quick stretch. You can kind of start to see right out here that we're getting some detail in the Andromeda. Then I'm going to go back into Image, Adjustments, Levels. And I just keep doing this until the detail shows itself to me. You are also going to set your black point at some point. In fact, I'll show you that, I guess, real quick here. And again, I'm going through the red, the green, and the blue channels and just sliding them up so you start to see the detail slowly starting to form in here. At some point, you're going to pick your black level. And there's the uh, eyedroppers over here on the right. Come out in your screen, click around a little bit till you see what you like. That already looks pretty good right there. So you start to see that you're getting some detail. I'm going to go up and do one more stretch for you because I think here we're really going to start to see some of the detail come out. There you go. Bring that down a little bit. And now you can start to see right through here that you're starting to get some of the detail of the galaxy. One more time, I'll go back into the levels. And here what I'm going to probably end up doing is taking the black point again. Click around a little bit. There you go. Already looks good. So you can start to see that I'm coming up with some of the detail of the Andromeda Galaxy. That's how I use Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and forward ahead now because it takes me about 8 to 10 minutes to get through this process. But I just want to show you what it looks like when I'm done with all of my stretches um, here in Photoshop. Okay, here's what Andromeda looks like after running it through Photoshop and adjusting the levels and the curves. I'm going to take it over into Lightroom just to tweak some of the colors a little bit, but I'm not going to walk you through that process now. I'll save that for another video. Instead, I'm just going to bring you what my final Andromeda looks like.